there are six games in the Jack and Daxter franchise, but if you're only really interested in playing the original trilogy, then you can play those on PS2, 3, 4, 5, and even the PlayStation Vita. So, pretty simple, right? Absolutely f not. I mean, why make anything simple when we could instead make it unnecessarily complicated and super difficult? So you don't end up with buyer's remorse, I'm gonna lay these out as clearly and as simply as I can for you. But because it is so complicated, a couple of ground rules first. Rather than categorizing everything by game, I'm gonna categorize everything by console. Yeah, I've thought about it a couple of times and just trust me, this is the easiest way to do it. That means if you just have a PS2 or just a PS4, you can jump straight to that section of the video if you'd like and see what you're gonna be able to pull out of the lucky dip. I'm also gonna need the help of all you Jack and Daxa pros out there. I only played this series myself for the first time like two months ago and all of this is information I wish I had have known then. So from your own experience, which of these versions do you think is the best way to experience these games? Leave your recommendations in the comments down below and everyone else, go check out the comments and hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Okay, let's rip and tear. Fortunately, we get to ease our way into this thanks to our old mate, the PlayStation 2. Through the PS2, you can play Jack and Dax of the Precursor Legacy, or Jack 1, as I'm just gonna call it from this point forward, Jack 2, Jack 3, Jack X Combat Racing, and Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontiers are all available on PS2 the way that they were originally intended to be played. There are no bundles, nothing confusing about them, and like with all PS2 games, you have to get them physically. So I can almost certainly promise you that you're gonna need to give that disc a good rub on your shirt before it'll work. I'm just kidding. Everyone knows you have to lick them first and then clean them on your pants. All five of these games were developed originally for the PS2, with the exception of The Lost Frontier, which was also developed for the PSP at the same time. Don't see that very often. Well, it was nice while it lasted. Time to get muddled. Jack 1, 2, and 3 were all released on PS3 in one convenient package. Depending on where you lived, this package would have been called one of two things. If you lived in Europe or Australia, like yours truly, then it would have been called the Jack and Daxter Trilogy. If you lived anywhere else, it would have been called the Jack and Daxter Collection. Now, releasing a game with a different name in a different country is nothing new. Most of the time this happens because of cultural or language differences, or because it's infringing on someone's IP. I'm pretty sure though that none of those things would have caused the name to have to change from collection to trilogy. But I digress. Now despite the Jack and Daxter collection having collected only three out of the six games that had already been released, it did manage to do some pretty cool things. This collection was a full 720 HD remaster with all the bells and whistles you would expect to find in 2012, so you better believe that means 3D graphics and trophy support. It is also available digitally and physically. Being a remaster, this game runs smoother and looks crisper than it ever has, and most consider this collection to be the best way to play these games today. Terrifying knowing we still have two more generations to get through, isn't it? On the Jack and Daxa wiki, it has a list of differences between this version and the originals. But when it says differences, it means bugs. Because it's things like, some of the music is missing some of the notes, and when a character reveals their identity, their face is textureless. But that only happens the first time that the system plays the cutscene. This is giving me real end game adding on six extra minutes of footage to be able to beat Avatar at the box office vibe. So I'm gonna stop stalling and move on to the problem child. Through a PS4, you'll have the ability to play Jack 1, 2, 3, and for the first time since PS2, Jack X Combat Racing. Yay. I haven't played it myself, but I'm sure it's fun. These also come in a single convenient package, and it also has two names depending on the country that you're from. And it's also called... Wait, is this right? Yeah, have, we, have we double checked it though? Have we... We have. And... Oh, f and it's also called the Jack and Daxter collection, but this time in Australia and Europe. Huh? Everywhere else, it's called the Jack and Daxter bundle. And I mean, maybe this is just me, but that sounds like you're getting less than something you would get if you were getting a collection. Ugh. I digress again. Since this game is available both physically and digitally, I can only imagine the number of confused emails that eBay sellers received when this game and the PS3 game were on sale at the same time. So to clarify, PAL Countries got the Jack and Daxter trilogy of three games on the PS3 and the Jack and Daxter collection of four games on the PlayStation 4. Everywhere else got the Jack and Daxter collection of three games on the PS3 and the Jack and Daxter bundle of four games on the PlayStation 4. Oh, oh. But we're not done. These are not the same versions that were on PS3. Because remember, why the fuck 
Does anything need to make sense? While the PS3 versions are HD remasters, the PS4 versions, including Jack X Combat Racing, are the PS2 versions upscaled and emulated through the PlayStation 4's PS2 emulator. Due to their emulated state, it means issues like frame rate drops and graphical bugs are a lot more common, and it also means that anyone looking to speedrun the game isn't going to find much joy on these versions. I also can't for the life of me figure out why they didn't just use the PS3 versions that were better that came out 5 years before it. I mean, the only thing I can come up with is that people couldn't be bothered to remaster Jack X Combat Racing, but surely there's got to be a better reason than that. If you happen to know, Leave that in the comments as well while you're at it. When it comes to PS5, for better or for worse, these are exactly the same versions as we got on PS4 because they're just the PS4 versions running backwards compatible. However, the increased power of the PS5 does seem to have an impact. There are a number of people who have said that their experience playing the collection on PS5 was a lot better than those playing the collection on the PS4. As someone who played through the original trilogy on the PS5, I can't remember any frame rate drops or any major bugs to speak of that made me want to put down the game. Uh, with the exception of this one bug in Jack 2 where it kept making me die. Now, I don't know exactly what it was, but I know it wasn't my fault. You see, I'm really good at games. Now we get to Portable Town and we're gonna talk about the PSP. As I mentioned before, Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier was developed for PS2 at the same time it was being developed for PSP. So technically, it's not a port. What it was though, was the worst received game in the franchise and not made by Naughty Dog. Just to rub a little bit of salt into the wound, Naughty Dog came out afterwards and said in retrospect, and actually I want to make sure I get this right, they were not happy with the game being Jack's swan song and it could have been done a lot better. Ooh. Awkward. This game is probably easiest to get your hands on physically unless you own a PS3 or a PS Vita. Since the PSP store is closed, you have to actually use one of those two systems to buy it and download it so you can then transfer it onto your PSP system. Bloody hell, way too many steps for me. Personally, I think it's just way easy to click that like button if you're enjoying this video, but just one person's opinion. But there is a second game we need to talk about and that's Daxter, a game made exclusively for the PSP by, oh, would you look at that? Also not Naughty Dog. Man, it's like they're allergic to Sony's handhelds or something. I mean, even Uncharted couldn't get them to go anywhere near those things. Daxa actually did pretty well and was regarded at the time as having set a new standard for what the PSP was capable of. But despite its success, it never received a console port and for games coming from a handheld device, that's generally a blessing in disguise. Haha, <laughs> I bet you thought we were done. You wish, bucko, you're gonna hate this one. Before I get into it, let's get the straightforward one out of the way first. Daxter is also available through the PS Vita as one of the PSP essential games. It is exactly the same as what you would find on PSP. You can just play it through your PS Vita. Nothing else to really say there. The Jack and Daxter collection, however, was also ported to PS Vita. And obviously, when I say the Jack and Daxter collection, I'm referring to the North American naming of it because that's about as clear as mud. To actually make it clear though, I'm talking about the three games that were remastered for the PS3. So the good news then is at least you'll be playing the best version of the trilogy on your Vita, right? But guess what? You're none from two now because that is definitely not the case. The Vita ports were absolutely slammed thanks to its terrible controls, its FPS that was inconsistent across all three games, and the fact that they somehow managed to look worse than the original PS2 versions. If you do really want to spend your hard earned on this one, it is available physically and digitally. Which actually brings me to my last weird point about this PS3 Vita version. I checked on the Aussie PSN store on my Vita and on the PS3, and true enough, they're all there, ready to be downloaded, either as an individual game or as part of a collection. On the Vita, each game is going to set you back about $23 e dues. But if you fork out an extra $2, then you can get the whole trilogy for $25. And that is a ripper of a deal. On the PS3, however, the trilogy is a bit more lofty at $30, which for those playing at home is $5 more than the Vita version. But if you're just after the individual games, you can get those for $15 a pop. Pretty good value there as well. But Nothing out of the ordinary, I hear you cry. Games should be more expensive on PS3 than they are on Vita. And you would be right if this game didn't have cross-buy. This little gem means that when you buy a game on one system and download it, you can download it for free on the other system, which then begs the obvious question. Why is it priced differently at all? Again, I have absolutely no idea. But you gotta understand that I don't come up with this stuff. I just forward it along. 
And on that note, there is still one silver lining to take out of all of this. If you're an avid trophy hunter and you love this series, then the PS3, the PS4, and the PS Vita version all have separate trophy lists, meaning that's 10 platinum trophies right there. So now you know how you can play every Jack and Daxter game in 2022. Well, I know the simple answer is, as long as you've got anything newer than a PS1, you sweet as, hopefully, I was able to tell you something that you didn't know. If you like this, I've done a similar video on how to play every Ratchet and Clank game today if you're a fan of that franchise. If not, maybe I can tempt you with some of my thoughts on Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy after playing it for the first time. Consider subscribing if you like this video. I won't have a new one going up next week, but I've got lots more like this on the channel that hopefully you can entertain yourself with until then. Otherwise, I'll see you in about two weeks.